it's okay. okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. We just like can't. Me. We be and boys like, like that. Of you can't be guys and like me, do you understand? I get that. Or want to make a move at me. That's, 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 that's my point. That's I literally have no point ever wanted to like make a move at you, apart from like the first day. I was like, hey, yeah, I I He's actually being a big brother now. Yeah, Come on, I know if you're going to beat me back to back. You know, guys, I watched and listened to the level one housemates rant bitterly um, about their loss of the wager task presentation last night and all I could feel was irritation. Irritation guys, irritation. As a matter of fact, if there's any word bigger and deeper than irritation, that was exactly what I felt because I've been noticing this annoying attitude that these sort of housemates have and display whenever it comes to task. And listen, I understand and I completely get it that this is a competition and at the moment, according to Biggie's twist, according to Biggie's game plan, they are playing against, you know, each other as a collective, not as individuals. And so there's always room for that stiff competition, you know, um, each group or each team, they want to, they want to do the most to emerge the winner because there's just so much at stake. I mean, there's the, there's the nomination privilege, there's the head of house privilege, there's a lot of privileges, you know, pool party privilege, there's the after Saturday night party privilege, there's a lot of privileges, guys, that's at stake. So it's quite natural that their competitive spirit is going to be in full force, in full glare, right? Not just to the, us, the viewers, but to, to their fellow housemates that they are playing up against. But then, I feel like sometimes, they take it a, a tad bit too, too high to the point that they get extremely petty and unnecessarily savage that sometimes I just jump into the conclusion that, okay, fine, these people, they are just collectively blind and deaf to correction. They are collectively blind to their loopholes. They are collectively deaf to Biggie's remarks after every presentation for every task because if they are not deaf, trust me, whenever Biggie gives them a criticism, if it were a team of people that had common sense, they would take Biggie's words, take it back to their space and then they would deliberate on it, they would, they would think about it, they would talk about it, they would dissect it, they would analyze it and then they would ask themselves the most pertinent question, why did Big Brother say that we did what we did? Take for instance, last night, um, comments from Big Brother, oh, you people did too much, you were doing too much. Did they sit back to ask themselves why Big Brother said that they were doing too much? Instead, this coconut head, they went into their house and they were making statements like, hey, we had the pool party. One we can't seven. always win. We can't always win, we had the head of house, we beat them in. We the always get house. head of house and then it's we do win. So, uh, Big Brother is just being Big Brother. He just gave it to them because we've been winning all week. So Big Brother wants them to win. Frankly speaking, guys, I felt like that was just a huge insult thrown at Big Brother, thrown at the organizers of the show. Yes, because they, they just made it look like Big Brother does not have a brain of his own, like Big Brother is a headless chicken. And then they, 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 they made it look like us, the viewers, we're blind. Like we are not even seeing what they are presenting. And when I talk about collective deafness, collective blindness, guys, how did they not hear the noise that Giddy Fire and what's that other girl's name now, Rachel, how did they not hear the noise that they were making in that arena, all in the name of providing entertaining music? That was noise. That was crap. Yes, their presentation, their so-called runway showcase, it was a complete disaster. It was chaotic. There was no organization whatsoever. Everybody was strutting the runway like, like an elephant. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know that Big Brother gave um, Alison a compliment about walking the runway like a lioness, like a cat, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but overall, it was a disaster. Listen, guys. <laughs> I actually intended to talk about something else on this video, but I just could not resist the urge to do a bit of ranting. Yes, about the aftermath of um, last night's wager task with the level up housemates. Honestly, it was just completely irritating watching the level one housemates rant that way. I'm sorry, but when I say that they are very, very, they're collectively blind and deaf to corrections and to their mistakes, I mean it in all sense of the word, guys. I mean it because these people, 
they don't know that sometimes they do the most they don't know that sometimes they do too much they think that they are so perfect they think that they're the most creative sort of housemates and i've been holding back from saying all of this because um i noticed that some people have been saying that oh glory is being biased oh glory is leaning towards the the level two housemates because indirectly represents the trenches of the society that it's more like a classist situation or oh, um the level one housemates represent the rich of the society the level two housemates represent the poor of the society so obviously quite naturally glory elijah is gravitating towards the level two hell no come on hell no when the level two housemates mess up with their task I definitely talk about it when the level one housemates mess up i definitely talk about it where they those ones that need their accolades are given their accolades those ones that do not deserve it i do not give it and so guys this is my own suggestion to big brother the level one housemates as a collective now they need to be punished and i would advise or rather suggest to big brother if big brother would take my suggestion that whatever kind of punishment he would give to them it should also include them reflecting on their actions and on their statements because i don't know guys honestly let me just leave it at that and move on to why i'm actually filming this video today hey welcome back to my youtube channel my name is gloria elijah this is frankly speaking with glory and i am the girl with the t yes listen i'm not just gonna waste too much time on this intro but quick message to those of you that are new on here you've been visiting here getting juicy juice and then you're going back please quit it today all right just do exactly what you see on your screen to become a member of this family and to also be able to receive a lot of my videos whenever i upload a new one and then the ultimate information that nobody should miss out on today is that today is saturday you know what happens on here we have our fswg saturday youtube live stream every saturday 3 p.m wat and today is saturday obviously <laughs> i think i'm using obviously a lot these days guys thanks to shags <laughs> and no thanks to shags because i'm not liking it in my mouth at all but anyways guys please make it a date with us do not feel to come through there's a lot to unpack with regards to the ongoing Big Brother Niger season 7 level of edition, all right? And Big Brother is not the only reality TV show we talk about on here. Um, on here, we give the most detailed, factual, accurate analysis of reality TV shows, movies, and trendy social topics. So if such content interests you on the internet, you're welcome to this space. Now, without much further ado, let's get into the video. Oh. To be very frank with you all, the point of this video was just basically to address the explosive argument, the explosive altercation that happened in the level one house amongst all the housemates. <laughs> Guys, it was like a chain reaction. You know, initially it started with um, Chi Chi, Bella, Doi, you know, having a conversation about what happened during the truth of their game that they had played on thursday night after their pool party and apparently doing that actually made a statement that did not really sit well with deji yes talking about oh um the the giver and the receiver they were both drunk but then the 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 receiver should be the one that is most ashamed something like that right and deji did not really like it because for him that was doing overstepping her boundaries no matter the kind of rapport they have she had no right to say such a thing about him even went as far as saying that oh she even went as far as saying that oh and there are some men that cannot even hold their alcohol so why do they even bother you know taking alcohol in the first place now she was actually referring once again to deji and we know that this is a conversation that deji has had with her before in the house that listen i do not like the way you throw derogatory words at me because it makes it paints me in a bad light you know to the rest of the housemates and Doni had not really taken heed to Deji's warning and so yesterday before the housemates had their task wager task presentation that was when the explosive argument occurred yes Deji had been so upset and he had actually called out Doni and had addressed it right there and then although she was trying to deny it but he had actually addressed it now in the course of all of that conversation everybody was talking at the same time Shags now decided to bring his own Bella's conversation. Now, can I just tell you all this? Now, he started by stating that he knows for a fact that even though he's no longer in the level up mansion, that there's no guy in that house that will be able to kiss Bella, whether in the truth or their game or not. Like, he's so confident about that. Whilst he was going on and on about that, Dot 2 now chipped in that, bruv, don't worry, I've got your back, I've got you. And that was when... <laughs> Out of the blues, 
Shex turned on Dotu and started attacking him verbally like, no bro, no, you don't got my back. If not, what happened on Saturday at the party would not have happened. So all the other housemates that they were quite surprised like, okay, what's going on? Dotu too was taken aback. And that was when he now brought up the story of um, during the last Saturday night party, Dotu had walked up to him to seek permission from him directly to dance with Bella. And it had actually taken him aback because he felt like Dotun was fully aware of the issue he and Bella had had before the previous Saturday or during the week about, oh, you're not going to dance with any guy, which was actually what cost he and Bella's first um, lover's teeth in the house. Yeah. Our whole conversation was like, why is Dotun even I'll asking? That was even, our, that was even the conversation we were having. Not, that was our conversation. Yeah, like, why are you even asking? Like, that's, like, that's your friend. Like. So he had gone ahead to say that he had not really obliged Dotun's request, but then before he knew it, Ile Baye had actually come along with alcohol and had said, oh, um, Bella should come with her, Bella should go and dance with Dotu. ah, nobody's going to take your girlfriend away from you. So for him, it did not really make sense because everything just felt too coincidental that, okay, this is the same Dotu that came to come and seek permission to dance with my girl and then somebody else is now coming from another house to come and tell me to free my girl so that this person will dance with my girl. So for him, he felt like it was a planned work. He felt like Dotun had actually had the conversation with Le Baye, you know, so that he could dance with Bella all the same. So for him, that really infuriated him. So Dotun was asking him that, okay, fine. You obviously misconstrued everything. You misunderstood everything. But if you had such in mind, this is over a week. Why are you just bringing this up? You and I, we are G's. We're in this house together. You've never mentioned it. We've been talking, we've been laughing. And then today, out of nowhere, you're bringing up this conversation. Ashax had gone on and on and on, even went ahead to even state that, oh, he knows that Dotun has been trying to hit on Bella, but he should let Dotun know that it's not going to work out because it's not going to click. So Dotun was trying to let him know that, listen, in the first week, yes, I liked Bella, but I will not make a move on her because there are other ladies in the house and even in the level two space that I like. Um, you of people knows that I am attracted to Ilebaye and I've been trying to get with Ilebaye. You know this. And then Shags was like, no, it's not because you're my G that you're not getting at Bella. It's because you know that even if you go to Bella, it's not going to click. And I'm like, wow, that was such an insult. Like, what does this guy mean even? Now, this conversation went on and on and on and it was kind of, pissing off the rest of the housemates and surely the ladies because they felt like okay why do you always think they were now directing it at Shex that okay why do you always think that people are always trying to come at Bella what is so special about Bella why do you always think so you know and the guy was just guys it was just a crazy uproar everybody was talking at the same time everybody was talking at the same time tempers were flaring here and there and guys in all of these things, Bella was literally supporting Shex because Dotu now is actually Bella's very close friend, was asking Bella that, Bella, have I ever made a move on you? And Bella was like, no, um, but Ilibayat said, and I was like, no, it doesn't matter what Ilibayat said, but it matters what you have observed of me. We are in the same house. Have I ever made a move on you? Guys, at that point in time, I was expecting Bella to come out clean, but no, she just wanted to support Shex blindly. And that's exactly what she was doing and was really infuriating the likes of Chi Chi and Chomzi and Diana. And these ladies were just, were, were just so upset. Guys, the back and forth went on and on, on and on for a while until finally, Shags now started, you know, backing down, saying that, oh, fair enough, it might be. Because Chomzi was now making a case for Dotun. Now listen, you are accusing Dotun of you know, plotting with Ilebaye to come and take Bella away from him to go and dance with her. That, no, that that was what Ilebaye had been doing all night long on that Saturday. Ilebaye had been matching people up together to dance, pairing people up together to dance. That Ilebaye had even matched she herself, Chomzi, with Dotun to dance. So it was quite coincidental, you know. And this was coming after a lot of arguments, arguments. So finally, Shex now said, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But he made sure he kept on you know, stamping his point that no matter what happens, even though he's no longer in this house, that even Dotu cannot get with Bella. It's not going to work. Guys, this is what I think. Number one, I felt like Shags was just looking for an opportunity to be controversial. Yeah. Number two, I felt like once again, Shags was looking for an opportunity to prove to Bella that, hey, 
I am your man. I'm proud of you. I have got your back. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to fight every senseless and stupid battle for you, whether it makes sense or not. Number three, I felt like Shags coming at Dotun like that, that was an insult. You know, it's okay to tell a guy that, oh, I trust my woman so much that, you know, if I'm no longer in this house, I don't think you can get her even if you wanted to get her. But then telling him that, oh, it's not because we're bro uh, we bros, but it's because it's not just going to click. I felt like that was an insult because we know how Shags talks. Constantly talking about where he's coming from, constantly talking about um, the kind of friends he has, his affluence. It, when Shex speaks, guys, I'm not going to lie to you all, and that this is a game and all, but I feel like I'm actually hearing another kid wire speak. Yeah, because the same line of thought that Shex told when speaking in that house, it's the same line of thought in a similar way that kid wire was utilizing during the lockdown season of Big Brother Ninja. And it's very annoying, guys. If you have so much, if you are who you are, if you're all of that, sometimes less is more it makes sense when you don't tell too much like sometimes when shags opens his mouth it's like it's a basket that leaks it's like what he should not say he says the things he should hold back he does not hold back and you know the funny thing <laughs> it's bella's it's bella's confidence for me when shags gets into his bragging mode when he gets into his talkative mode you know where he gets to say a lot about his, his profession, what he does, the money he makes, how wealthy his friends are, how wealthy his community is, blah, blah, blah. You will see how Bella's shoulders will just rise like a peacock. And she will be so, like, in her mind, she feels like, oh, yes, I'm the queen of this house. I am married to the king of this house. And guys, I'm like, people should calm down. At the end of the day, one person is going to walk away with that 100 million naira. So all these shenanigans people are doing up and down. What is it for? What exactly is it for? My verdict is that Shex is definitely playing a strategy. There's nothing anybody can tell me. Shex is definitely playing a strategy. And one of his game plans included in that strategy is to continuously wow Bella. To continuously impress Bella. I mean, that is his sole aim in that house. I feel like everything Shex does in that house now, in fact, from day one, is a calculated attempt in building up a process to holding this girl down as a game plan. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting to see, guys. I mean, it's a very, very interesting strategy. And listen, I'm not against it because at the end of the day, it is a game. Every single player, every single housemate they need to come correct. They need to come forward with a workable and, you know, impressive strategy. And in my opinion, Shex is actually doing great at it. If you ask me if whatever he is feeling for Bella, whatever they are doing is actually 100% real. If you ask me, <laughs> now who I go ask? <laughs> Listen, guys, there's no guarantees about that. But about his strategy, I'm actually liking it because he's very fierce at it. And this guy is not holding any hostages. He's get, he, he gets petty with his strategy. He gets brutal with it. He gets savage with it. And sometimes he gets extremely condescending. Forget, whenever you hear Shex talking about, um, and you know, like me, I'm the kind of person, I'm the kind of person, nah, I'm not buying it. But I just felt like with regards to that argument, I felt like he unnecessarily dragged Dotong into a mess that was not supposed to happen because number one the conversation wasn't even about them the conversation was about doing deji chi chi bella and who else diana but then he just had to look for a way to steal the attention and then voila he got the attention because that argument pounded out for over over i think 20 minutes or even 15 minutes ladies and gentlemen i have said my piece yes and hey please those of you who are fans and fanatics of shags and bella don't come for me. If you come for me, me, I will come for you as well. Don't come for me. I'm just saying what I have observed from the show. I know that you also have your own observations. So please feel free and share yours in the comment section below. All right. Let's respect each other's perspective. Let's respect each other's opinion because that is the best way of, you know, self-expression, right? You express yourself. You allow other people the space to express themselves as well. So go ahead and let me know yours in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys on another video soon. Have an amazing day. Bye.